Hoshi. Music is jamming. <laughs> Right. I think we finished all the investigation, I believe. Hello. I'm doing good. Yeah, I was so excited to uh, start the game again because I I've heard so many good things. So, um, we'll be going on our second court case. September seventh, ten o'clock a.m. District Court, Court Room, number one. Oh, we're doing the court case now. We're not doing any more investigations. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fett. We avenge in Maya today. We are. This is the first time we meet Maya. The, the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Oh my gosh, we see Edgeworth for the first time. The defense is at ready, Your Honor. How's that worth? You better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Yeah, our boy! Yeah, I've I've seen so much like fan art of him and like a lot of love to him, so I'm very like excited to see him. <laughs> he is a fan favorite for sure. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fey, was at the scene of the crime. You actually watched season one of the anime? I did not, surprisingly, but I did see the the bloopers. Like, uh, the voice actors doing bloopers and stuff. And that was hilarious. <laughs> you haven't seen it, it's so good. <laughs> it's not that loyal? Yeah, I, I heard that too. Like, um... I only knew a little bit of Phoenix, right? And I already knew right off the bat it was not really loyal and... Um, I guess I couldn't keep watching it, like, I only saw a little bit of it, and I saw, like, the opening and the animation was very stiff, and I was like, oh no. But when I saw the bloopers, the anime didn't look that bad. I thought it was very enjoyable looking, but I didn't see the actual anime itself. <laughs> yeah. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason of, to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. Yeah, the animation of the cat lets us down. Yeah. Uh, I think they have a season two that has better animation, but I'm not sure. I can't say for sure. But I do think they did pick up the animation a lot better afterwards. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. We may call our first with first witness, Your Honor. Prosecution calls the chief officer of the scene, Detective Gumshoe. No oh boy. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of the homicides down to the pr uh, press. <laughs> How do you pronounce that? Precant? Present? <laughs> Sir! <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the dis details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. The second way, I guess. <laughs> oh. The body was found by the window here. And in the case of cause of death, lots of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon of the statue of the thinker found right next to the body, sir. <laughs> it was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even if in the girl's hand, sir. <laughs> Says sir so much. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Floor plans added to the court record. The murder scene, the Fay and Co. All law officers. Good morning, Natsu! How are you? No, detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. <laughs> hmm. Detective Gumshoe. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. 
doing good, just a little tired. Oh, I hope you feel a lot better, not soon. As soon as a phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people here already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. That very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. He rushed to the seat, sir. <laughs> Cross-exam what? Couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. Smack? Hey, Ma Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradiction in a witness testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness will always slip up and say something wrong. It works lots of times. Heh. I should have expected Miss Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Hey! Hey! Oh my gosh! Excuse me. Something the matter? N no, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Thank you! Thank you for the blessings. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Who did you say you got the call from? Hey pal, don't play dumb. You know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel, right across the crime scene. Hmm, okay, I pressed. Not sure it did much though. Right, please continue. There were two people there already. Detective Gumshoe, how long did you say what it, say to, it took between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime? Hmm, right. I'd say about three minutes. Th that's pretty fast! She literally threw the hint at her face. Yes, yeah, she did! <laughs> Our motto this month is quick response. And that's how I got before the killer got away, sir. <laughs> Indeed. So, tell it. Tell us who the two people you found on the scene. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Are you absolutely sure it was us? Listen, pal, your dumb act will only get you so far. With her funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair, you two stand out like two suspicious people at a crime. <laughs> crime scene? Oh, he does have a point there. About her, she is pretty much unmistakable. I should pick my points to press a little more care. But it doesn't hurt to press everything, right? Alright. Oh. Rest of my. I love Gumshoe. <laughs> yeah, he's so funny. He does have that detective drip. <laughs> hey, Karma. It's nice to see you! Why is that? What's your reason? Why? We had a witness account describing her. Hold on, just one second. N yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence. She did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say something that? Me? I'm just vibing. Yeah. You did say it. You said it. <laughs> Exactly what is a suspicious woman in Pink's claim of was hard evidence? What? Miss Maya isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't Pink, pal. Well, I guess she is Pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um, hmm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. God. Sorry, I just got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, your honor. Sir, I was just a little, uh, uh, there was something I should have told you about first, your honor. Very well, detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Hard evidence. 
After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it was the word of Maya, was written clearly in blood. The lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Yeah, but like, the killer can just easily like, take her blood and just like, use her finger to make it like a, a stylus. How's that? That's my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin the cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y your Honor? Why didn't you testify about the vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, uh I know. I'm a real embarrassed. I forgot about it. Your Honor. Sir! <laughs> Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. And did you find any evidence? No, no, don't jump the gun on me, pal. Just listen, I'm getting on the good part. I got a bad feeling about this. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On, oh, whoops. A memo. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Exactly! Ho oh, ho, then who wrote- did write it, smarty pants? Who, who? Um... Um... The killer. The, the killer! Anyone could see that! Cool. You're saying the killer wrote her own name, buddy, please. She was framed. If that's the case, where's your evidence? Now, there is a piece of evidence you can say. If you, uh, think about it, she just had the evidence out in the open, right in front of Maya Faye, on her, her body and stuff. If Maya saw that, she would have stolen it and tried to hide it and stuff, but she didn't even think about it when she saw the paper and stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's obviously not her. Huh, I guess I was a bit of a tall order for you. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Yeah, pal. Ugh. Well, detective, tell us what was written on that memo you found. On it, the word Maya was clearly written in blue. Do you have proof it was Mia who wrote that? Of course I do, pal. Oh, he sounded pretty confident. This might not be good. Lab test results show the blood was the victim's. What kind of tests were these again? Uh, what kind? Um, well, I hear they take the um little bit bits of blood in the uh, hemoglobin, hemoglobins, hemoglobins. A hemogoblin bobbin? <laughs> I refuse to testify on this matter, pal. Hi, Nightmare. How are you? <laughs> I'm no expert on the blood tests. Yes, that was quite clear. You may continue with your testimony. Th thanks, pal. I mean, your honor, sir. <laughs> he calls everybody pal. Detective Gumsh. Yeah? I look forward to your next evaluation, as should you. Well, that was a mess. Right, where was I? I love testing goblins. The hobo goblins, yeah! <laughs> and there was blood found on the fingertip. On which hand was the bloody finger detected? The right hand. Hmm, she was right-handed. Not bad, how are you? I'm doing good. I, uh, I was, like, catching up on some anime lately. I haven't done that in a while. So I had a really good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Uh, I guess it wasn't too hard to see what I was getting at there. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was good. How are you? How was yours? Oh, yeah, you said now bad. <laughs> If you had anything interesting that happened, yeah. Got some free- uh, got some free time, yeah! So like, um, I guess like, since I was finally able to clear up some commissions and stuff, I finally had some more free time to work on it. Um, very close to finishing one of them, and then I could finally f work on, like, my first VGen commission I ever got. So, pretty cool. Well, anime-wise, two anime I watch came back. Oh, that's awesome! Oh, yeah, there was Shield Hero, right? Shield Hero and... Um... What was the other one? There was Attack on Titan. There is another season of Spy Family. Another... Uh, well, what else did come out? I think Shield Hero was the biggest shock for me, that came out. I'm sure there was more season, new seasons that came out of animes that haven't appeared in a while. I am still waiting for Blue Exorcist Season 3. Please! <laughs> I want them to catch up with Blue Exorcist manga. It's so good. It's actually getting so much better. <laughs> Where she died, the, the victim wrote the killer's name. It's gonna take a while. I cry. They didn't even get to the good part where Blue Exorcist gets this big turnaround. Yeah. Detective Gumshoe. Do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's names? Maybe someday I'll give it the ble they'll give it the bleach treat. I think um the the second season of the anime is actually very accurate to the manga. The first season was um not as accurate. I would just say only like the last six episodes of uh, the anime were not accurate to the manga. But other than that, if you just went from episode 18 to season 2, then you're pretty much getting the exact um, order of how it was in the, um, the manga. Yeah, Blue Exorcist is so good. I'm- yeah. You get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's names. Sure, it happens all the time in books and movies. <laughs> Gumshoe! Real life, not books and movies. This isn't a movie, detective. Ooh. Let's talk about reality, shall we? Um, I guess I haven't heard many cases, no? Do you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister. Ah, oh, yeah, actually, you got a point, pal. Yeah, I think even if Maya did kill her own sister, Mia would not so sell her out. She would be like, I love you and stuff. I don't want you to get in trouble. Unless she has pure malice against Maya. But from what you hear, um, Mia loves her sister Maya. And if Maya killed Mia, like for real, if she did, she probably would just be like, it is what it is, kind of thing. Because, um, yeah, pretty sure she loves her. And even if she saw that she killed her, she'll be like, I guess she had a reason to. She even trusted her evidences before. Yeah. Objection! Stop right there. The witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. Order! Order! That didn't go so well. We almost got him. <laughs> That's right, what he said. That's his whole testimony. Okay, there has to be a contradiction in there somewhere. Let's find it. I forget which one was it where he was it this one? I need a a refresher to find out where's the one where I need a C What was it that where he we were talking about the killer? Let me see the present. 
Bond Force Trauma, Holes Conversation Between Chief and Maya, Broken Remains of Glastium, Broken Behind All of Recognition, Thinker Weapon, The Wiretap, the Department Store Receipt with Letters Written in the Name of the Back, The Murder Scene, let me see, what does this look like? Ah. But there was glass on the floor, so someone had to have broken in through the glass. There's no way that- because Maya went through the front door. Thank you. I feel like I'm gonna get this wrong if I try to show the glass. It was the victims. Objection! <laughs> Hi, Adro! Adi! Adio! <laughs> Before she died, she wrote the killer's... Oh, Leaner! Yeah, I could just call you Leaner! <laughs> uh, I... I'm lost. <laughs> I don't even know what to press. Uh... Let me see the tab thing again. So it looks like I can't do people. What's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, there's actually something I want you to hold on for me. Oh, uh, again? What is it this time? It's a clock. It's made uh, to look like the statue of the thinker, and it tells you the time. Uh, I should probably tell you my clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry, I had to put some papers inside instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? I'll leave that one up to your imagination. See you tonight at nine. The time? The, the time. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. Oh, that was after... No, wait. That makes no sense. It says she died at 9 o'clock, right? And it says that they had this conversation at 9.20. Oh! No, wait. It was a call, so it's, it's verbal, so she heard her voice. That's for sure. It was not a text. Uh, time of death. Wait a minute. Did she text her? the heck? Wait, wait, wait. You're, you're on to something there. Let me go... Let me go back. Oh. That's his whole testimony. Okay, there has to be a contradiction. We gotta find it. Um... There's no time on here. What is it? Oh no, time looking sus. Yeah, that's what I think too. You didn't examine the subject? I did uh, press everything. Um, do I press again? And did you find any evidence? No, no, don't jump the gun on me, pal. Just listen, I'm getting to the good part. I got a bad feeling about this. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it's already green, which means I already pressed it. Ah! I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. Yeah, that's true. That did happen. On it was the word Maya written in blood. There's nothing to prove wrong, though. Oh, where's the... the tap button? <laughs> um, oh... God. There's... Hmm... Yeah, death was instantaneous. Hmm... 
There was blood found. Wait, how did she write the paper? Uh, apparently they used her finger with her own blood and written it on the paper. But she died instantly. Oh, <gasps> you're right, Hoshi! Oh my gosh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, where do I do it? Aha, aha, there we go, there we go. That's, thank you, oh my gosh. Okay, so it's an instantaneous, so. Ah! <gasps> Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Maya Faye, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Faye. That's really what you're saying. W what? This is one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. Backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to the blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order! Order! The defense has a point. Someone who had died immediately wouldn't have time to write down anything down. Mr. Wright. I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? W when? It was... I think it was the day after. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... Oh, he got an updated report, did he? Oh my gosh! Hi, Hui! <laughs> that autopsy report is outdated, your honor. What? The second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. He's a step ahead of us. The death was almost immediate due to the blow from the bond object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor. You're out to Edgelord reveal, yeah! Your Honor. It's quite easy to imagine the victim did have time to write Maya. And that is all. I see! Darn you, Edgeworth! Detective Leaner here! <laughs> Yeah, he's a step ahead of us. Why did he have to get an updated autopsy report? He really wanted to win this case. Should have known you would be something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright? You look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham! The detective's a sham. I'm a sham! <laughs> what do I even say? Because it's like, any of these is bad. I blame Gum. Yeah, <laughs> I blame Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe, you're a sham. How could you give me faulty report? Well, I, I thought Detective Gumshoe. I'm disappointed at you handing him the wrong report like that. <laughs> We're putting all the blame on Gumshoe because Gumshoe is not. Uh, he is a special boy. <laughs> I am sorry, sir. You're at fault, detective. This is not going to look good on your evaluation next month. But what? But Your Honor, I support uh, submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. Died by a, a blow by a blunt object may have lived for a few minutes after being hit. Well, Your Honor. The evidence strongly suggests the evidence the victim was identifying the killer. No raise for you, Detective. The name is kind of stupidly funny, Detective Gumshoe, and his first name is Dick. <laughs> I suppose that's the obvious conclusion. Yes. That's smug. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. 
This poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, uh, witness Miss April May take the stand. Smug Lord. <laughs> exactly what part of her is innocent? <laughs> witness, your name please. April May, at your service, Wink. Oh, <laughs> either backside. Order. An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. I really hate girls like this. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. <laughs> oh, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. I'm gonna be putting on a jacket. I am cold. <laughs> the bounce. <laughs> It looks like some sort of e-girl. I know, she was e-girl before e-girl was a thing. I remember uh, seeing pictures of her before and I was like, oh, she looks cute. But uh, yeah, I don't think she she is that cute after seeing like when I got her upset that one time when I was in her room trying to touch her drawer. She was like, hey. <laughs> okay, I'll hydrate. You're who? She is not pure. <laughs> I drink water. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was like in my hotel room, T. I checked right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the main code law offices. That's right, big boy. Oh, Please testify to the core about what you saw. It was like nine o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was a mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then that woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away, like a boxer. <laughs> With a girl, she caught up to her and she hit her! Then the woman with the long hair, she kinda slumped. Yeah, that's all I saw. Every it, little bitsy itsy, a uh, wink. <laughs> I used to remember as a kid getting scared horribly of these sprite characters when you piss them off. Oh, yeah, I think it's more scary when it was like pixelated because like, yeah, it's like, I don't know. It gives you like that retro horror feel. Hmm. Well, your honor, you see, it was remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any. W wait, your honor? Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony right now was quite firm. Did you? Are you really going to let this e-girl win? <laughs> yeah, the 3D one wasn't so bad afterwards. Yeah. Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Maya Fey's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults and perfectly good testimonies. Hi, Ikjo! Don't let the e-girl win! <laughs> Even the judge is simping. He is. Hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, I'm doing it. I'm gladly proceed with the cross-examination. Only I, because I don't have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She must have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. It was like nine o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know. Ah, uh, what's present? This one. Why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why not? Why would you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh well, um, gee, what? That's it? She can't even think of this question out that easily. I sort of, you know, <laughs> had a feeling. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. 
Maybe I should press a little harder on this one. Let's see how far I can run with this. Surely, you must have a reason to look out the window at the time of night. I- ugh! Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. But badgering You insist on needling her to these trivial, trivial questions? I really don't think she should be allowed. Yeah! Yeah! Stop him! Oh my god! The poor girl! Order. Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Oh my gosh! The poor girl! What about poor me? You looked out the window. What did you see next? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The woman with long hair was... that was Maya Faye? Or Mia Faye? Slender, sort of. Well, some people might say pretty, if that's your thing. <laughs> she doesn't think she's pretty. Your thing? And the person attacking her? The one attacking her was a mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. How did you know she was a defendant? Huh? Well, you know. Sh she has girlish physique. Women know these things. L look, I, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. Question testimony. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. But what? She's jealous of Mia's racks are larger than hers. <laughs> you saw nothing. You're lying. You, did you really see the defendant at all? <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yeah, what's the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this. I mean... <laughs> Okay, if you really had witnessed my client Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal for me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of those things. The testimony is bogus. But... But, still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, your honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumption. What do you say to that, Miss May? Var! What are you trying to say, you, I, you mean, lawyer? I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss Maya. The court would like you to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Wink. <laughs> your testimony again, if you would. Darn, I almost had her. Oh, she changed it. I did see everything. I did. The victim... The woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That clock, um, that's kinda statuey clock? The thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Tee hee. Well, how did you know it was a clock? Because it doesn't work. I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please, begin the cross-examination. Should I... point out that clock? I did see everything I did! Yeah, I... I know exactly with... Yeah, the clock. Okay, let me, um... Do the present? Oh, wait. Should I do this? Returns doesn't work on me. <laughs> no, you should press it. Okay, I'll press it then. Alright. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. I meant to press. Uh, press. A uh, clock? Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? 
Well, doesn't it look so sour, Mr. Lawyer? You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. Yeah, that's... that's it. That is it. We do the... the phone call. Yeah. This... oh no, I'm wrong. This evidence... no, I'm wrong. Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think the facts over before making accusations. Ah! Okay, so it's not that. I gotta press everything. The statue? Oh, okay. Really? Maybe I should press some more on other stuff. Where did this weapon come from? She picked it up from the desk. I see. What sort of weapon was it? Uh, let me see. Let me try the clock then. Alright, if this doesn't work, sure. Oh, it does work. <gasps> Miss May. What did you say just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Oh, he should have said like... You would say like that. Oh, you would like that, sorry. Oh, you would like that. When you naughty minister lawyer. You just said that the statue of the thinker was a clock. Press all testimonies before presenting evidence because they tend to add new testimonies. Oh yeah, that's true. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Ugh. Another person in much same position as you recently called this a clock too, so... And when he found guilty of... And he was found guilty of murder. Order. Order. Miss May, can you explain how you knew this was a clock? Oh, ugh. The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw with your question, Mr. Wright. What questions are all I have, Your Honor? As you may recall, I've caught these murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Phew, that was close. If he stopped me there, then my trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is that you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? Th that's... Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So, you've been in the law offices of Fay & Co. N n no I, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. Hee <laughs> hee. The law offices of Fay & Co. Where the murder took place is very close to the hotel. She could have easily heard the clock. It not it, it isn't in the cell phone message? Yeah, it is. She just said, like, um, that, oh, uh, what was it? Oh my gosh, my brain is farting. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that she said that she took out all the clockwork inside the clock, so it no longer says the time anymore. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because she couldn't have heard it. It couldn't have run. Your Honor, members of the court. It was con conceivable that the clock in question rang. It's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. But how could you possibly... Just take a look right now. Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as defense says. The clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. And where is the evidence inside? Mr. Wright, would you care to explain the court the meaning of this? As it is, as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat lie. Fat? Well, Miss May. Tisk tisk. Quite a show you put on for us, Mr. Wright. 
He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you say. It can't ring. However, we must ask when the clock work removed. It was after the witness heard the clock. Then there was no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. But she only cared about fat- wait, fat what? Gosh, my throat. <clears throat> the clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Jonah. Well, Mr. Wright, could you prove that the clockwork was removed? Pause your check. Okay. Sit up straight and do a little stretch. Of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it that what you told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves that the clockwork was removed is. is this. Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Oh ho! You have a girly phone! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. This isn't my phone. But listen. This is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim of the day of the murder. Order! Order! The defendant's cell phone? Th this isn't brought into my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? Ugh. The good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. Miles surely got a hit. So you want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Huh? I should have probably told you that the clock isn't even talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clock work out. Sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Oh, that was a.m., not p.m. Oh. At first I thought it said p.m., so she said this early in the morning. And then 9 p.m., she died. Okay. I think it makes it clear that the clockwork has already gone by the time it was recorded. Which was... Well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well... Well, isn't it obvious? I saw the clock before! Um, what store was that again? I, I got so many! Oops, I forgot! Wink! <laughs> So, the witness has seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes, because it was made by Larry Butts! <laughs> the witness claims she had seen it before. But this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please, produce this evidence that will prove to the witness that we have seen this clock before. Um, where is it that it says, like, Larry made it? Yeah, it says made by Larry Butts. It's simple. The clock was never made in any store ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in the police custody. Impossible. Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh, excuses is not on sale today. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Her heart went upside down. What's it with you, pine porcupine head? 
That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die. Oh my gosh. Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is the court of law, and the witness will remain calm. <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 so silly me. <laughs> did I, uh, like, lose it? I guess I did, hee <laughs> hee, wink. Ugly transforming and bouncing milkers. Oh, e-girls, Karen is showing. I know, right? This is scary. Miss Maya, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Oh my gosh! Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because you had heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she did hear that the clock heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There was no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I could show you the proof she used a wiretap. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me the evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Take a look at this. Ugh! But that... <laughs> I found this in the Miss Maya's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what is this? Miss April May, you were tapping the victim. Miss Maya face phone, were you not? Ooh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. It's not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. Everything falling right into place. Yeah, it really is. It troubles me that our witness has the possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here is my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... It was here. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, there's something I want you to hold on for me. Again? What's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like a statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense room demands an answer. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right... You, lawyer. It's not fair, all of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? Ah! <laughs> now she's crying. That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April Mays now. Now, to deal with the final blow. Why the wire tap? Why did you wiretap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't it this the murder trial? Isn't tippity tappity er irrelevant? <sighs> She's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. 
I know she's not the killer, though, but I do know she is trying to, uh, co-work with somebody to kill Maya here. Because we did see who the killer was in the beginning of the scene. It was like a guy with pink hair. Well, the court does not condone the defense's tone of voice. He has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with the murder, even though you tapped your phone? Gah, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Oh my gosh. Darn, she's good. <laughs> we need to bring that guy to court. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think we even have him as like a witness or something. Well, you're not the first man who's thought of that. And of course, I can and will. You can't be serious. No way. Way, I say. Way. Oh, and I assure you I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Huh. <laughs> Okay, so the killing happened around 9 o'clock at night. Why, that's one around the room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you get regular cold coffee. A ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy, wink. Oh, she's gonna bring in the real killer. I think the bellboy's the killer. Ergo, the witness was not at the scene of the time of the murder. <laughs> oh, why am I get- I'm- I am- what do you call it? <laughs> now I'm- now my brain is farting. No! I was gonna say, like, I'm acing this. Hey, shuffling! So, where does this leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. Oh yeah, here, always clowning around. I'm not clowning! I'm acing! <laughs> I'm winning! <laughs> However, this is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Yeah, we clowning on them. Yeah. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fey, commit murder. No, they're going to let her just walk away. There's no way I can let her win unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. Call the bellboy. The defense would like to call the bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here and I'm going to get to the bottom. I think you've sunk in quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold to that wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree one condition, I'll consent to the calling of this witness. Condition? And my Maya's alibi is now what's called into question after you examine the bellboy. Then you will recognize that Miss Maya Fey was not the killer. Thus, she is innocent. Sam! <laughs> like 9% of the Phoenix Wright games is bailing Maya out of prison. Really? Oh, I thought this was going to be a one-time thing. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fey. I'm the killer. No, Haku. That is my condition. What? we better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Haku did it! Oh no, Haku! I didn't see it. Don't take it! Don't take it, Haku! I know you're not the killer! Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Accept the condition. Alright, I got nothing to lose. Except for, well, everything! Understood. I accept your condition. Huh. Fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. Uh, um, wait. <laughs> Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. It's like an exaggeration, but Maya always gets into trouble. Oh, man. I believe we're ready for the te witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. 
The tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. It's like, yeah. Oh my gosh. I am the head bell bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel in the business for four generations. We sip it now, yeah. I believe I received a call after eight o'clock in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for nice coffee to be brought at her by nine o'clock on the dot, sir. I brought it to her precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. My gosh, her boobs. <laughs> See, his defendant may begin his cross-examination. Right, I'm ready, I hope. This is it. I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now. Maya will be finished. Well, May's not the murder! I am the head bellboy at the fine gatewater in the business for four generations. You've got some competition? There's pi uh, Pixel Art Detective Game. Yeah, I know the original was Pixel Art because I saw the Game Boy version of this before. Wait, why, why do I have some competition? Oh, because of boobs? <laughs> okay. What exactly is it that you do? They're massive! I know, they're huge! What exactly is it that you do at the hotel? Why, anything required of me, sir? I check in on guests, I check out guests. I clean rooms, I make beds, I even deliver service, sir. I check Miss May in, in person. Are you always so... so prim? Mr. Wright, you will refrain from asking frivolous questions. I believe I received a call after 8 o'clock in the evening from our guest, Miss May. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. But how can you be so certain? I checked Miss May on pers in personally, sir. Not only did I see her in all steady radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them. I, uh... <laughs> oh, you mean her her two girlies? <laughs> him, er, uh, him... <laughs> We being, I remembered her quite well, sir. Yes, what about them? She asked me to bring an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot, sir. 9 o'clock on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed the detail several times. She was watching a program on TV, and I wished to drink after she finished, sir. 9 o'clock, the time of the murder. I brought to her precisely the requested time, sir. Precisely nine o'clock, then. Precisely. Exactly and most definitely, sir. Nine o'clock p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent about it to be brought in. Oh, bellboy. TV! I'd like iced coffee on exactly uh, nine o'clock. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on the door at the crack of nine o'clock, sir. Why would she be so particular about the time? And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss Maya, of course. You sure it was Miss Maya April May herself? Uh, absolutely, sir. You can't mistake in those uh, jiggly puffs themselves. Absolutely. Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, I brought the room service, sir. She, uh, the guest, sir, favored me with, um, uh, an embarrasser, sir? Embarrasser? Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir. But not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was that moment I shall never forget ever, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. 
I think our Miss Maya was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. No good. There's nothing there. It's... is that it? Tisk tisk. Finally, you understand. The bellboy was absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. No! Can't let this happen, can I? Wait, please, wait. Another one bites dust. Yes, does the defendant have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. The charade of justice has gone on long enough. No, no, Mr. Edgewood. Enough, Mr. Wright. I give you one more question, that's all. Okay. This is really is it now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Dang it! Guy from Blunt. Remains of a light stand, broken of all recognition. Department store receipt. I'm clueless, me too! Uh, there has to be something. The bed making, that's so odd. I don't think it would be bed making. It's either check-in and room service. What you can do at 9 a.m. though? How about check-in? Tell me about the check-in. Tell me about when you checked in, Miss May. Oh, all right. Very well, sir. My first thought that she was a beautiful, beautiful person. She's just my type of girl. So it was a disappointment, really. I, I see. Excuse me? What exactly was a disappointment? Well, I am not without charm, sir. But even if I had a little chance with a lover there... Her lover there? What? What did he say? What did you say? Uh, oh, uh, rather quite. We found something. We found a crack. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Did Miss Maya check in with another person? I object. That was objectable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you were... You didn't ask? Nice try. A sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, uh, yes, quite, indeed. It was the, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... Oh, Edward, why are you trying to cover up the truth? <laughs> he asked me not to mention if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Ugh. You fool! I've done it. I've won! Miss April May checked into the twin room with a man. Correct? Y yes, sir. Then, when you brought the room service... You didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Hmm. Miles, you're playing with my heart and mind. <laughs> I yo. Your Honor, you just learned of the another person involved with May, who is the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that impossible. It's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edward? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple. It was. The man with Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Your Honor. As been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping onto the victim's phone. I'm trying to check my battery life, but my... My gosh, I cannot see my phone at all. It's so... So light. It's so light, I can't see my phone at all. Alright, I won. What at what cost? Yet, 
Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man of, that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, my, what a convenient little setup. But it's too late. Too late. I suppose you'd like it if it, if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Upstart amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. <gasps> yes, Your Honor. That is all for the trial of my effect. Court is adjourned. Ooh, it's a break time. September 7th, 2.24 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Mr. Wright! You were amazing in there! Really? I think I might be your newest fan! Oh, I was just doing my job, you know? <laughs> then again, that other attorney is pretty cool, too. Huh? That face of him, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sends shivers up my spine. Hmm, you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I've got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? The man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard that they arrest- Oh, I heard they arrested her. I guess they're leaning- Learning her charms won't work in everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to get down there later. Anyway, this case is far from close. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Thank you for the head pad. Yeah, I did a good job. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he has the one? Do you think he was the one who? Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry. I will find him by tomorrow. I promise. I'm counting on you. He's running off the pr- The- What is it? The killer is running off somewhere. We gotta find him. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. May testimony added to the court record. The victim dodged an attack. Then ran to the right, but was caught and struck. I don't know how much of this, uh, much good this will do for me at all. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in the detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. Let's go halfway point. Sounds very important. Yeah, the fact that she dodged. September 7th, 3.11 p.m. It's like, 3 one what? <laughs> nah, 3.11. Detention center, visitor's room. Well, hello! I didn't expect anyone to visit me in such a dang place like this. It's really quite moving. Not, you stinking lawyer! I hope you die! Have you come to laugh? Yes, laugh at the fall of Miss May! No, not really. There's something I wanted to ask. Unfortunately, there is nothing I want to be asked. There's nothing I want to be asked. Haven't you done enough questioning, you spiky head? Here we go again. Download Tale of the Neon Sea, then watch the cool pixel art. Tale of the Neon Sea. Wait, let me see what that looks like. Tale of the Neon Sea. Whoa, that looks so pretty! Wait, I've seen this game before. I've seen this game. Very pretty. Let me see if I can show what it looks like on 
screen. I could move this. But yeah, like, it looks very pretty. Wait, it's, it's not showing the entire thing. Yeah, it's very, ooh. Very pretty, uh, pixel light. Yeah, let me put this back. Yeah, it does. Please, you're scaring the security guard. So, what do you... Was... What is... What is it you wish to ask me, then? Hmm. For starters, how did you get to be so totally whacked? Alright, let's, um... Let's examine around first. This guard monitors the visitor's room. He hasn't moved an inch. A real pro, this guy. Or maybe he just doesn't want to see a lot of women like Miss May around here. Uh, oh! Smile for the camera! So we got everything, pretty much. Alright, let's talk to you. It looks like middle of the future. Yeah, it does! About the man who stayed with you in your hotel room. Can you tell me about him? Where is he? Come on. No way, Jose! Hmm, maybe if I had something to get her to talk. Why did you place a wiretap on Maya's phone? Oh, when you say it like that, it sounds so cold. So criminal. Um, tapping people's phones is a crime, Miss May. Oh, and I'm supposed- And I suppose you learned that in lawyer school, hmm. Creep. This woman is impossible to talk to. Say, why are you so angry? I mean, don't look like a bad person. Oh, that doesn't bottom feeding scum sucking lawyer. Bottom? Can't tell. Does she have a thing against lawyers or just against me? Hmm. Hmm. Let's present something. what? Actually, I, um, really hate your guts. So, get lost, because, well, I'm not cooperating. Thanks, I noticed. I'm gonna punch your face so bad. <laughs> uh, it looks like I can't get anything out of her. Let's go to the Fane Cola offices. Looks like Forensics is taking the day off today. Detective Gumshoe's nowhere in sight. The police really gave this place a working over. Doubt there's any valuable clues left. Suppose it can't hurt to take a look around, though. Yeah, let's examine. Is there anything new? Maya's favorite potted plant. I so have to water it now. An old movie poster. Apparently, this was the first movie that made Maya cry when she first saw it. I have to check, on, check it out one of these days. The sky is blue, and so am I. There's that hotel right across the way. You couldn't cram more legal books in here even if you wanted to. All the cases that Chief worked on are filed in here. Wow, she's experienced. Hmm. Some of the files missing? Nah, I'm just imagining things. Uh oh, what the? Maya's desk. Perfectly clean, as always. The only thing that's missing is Maya. Mia. All right, looks like there's, uh, isn't there a side? Um, uh, is it M? September seventh, Gatewater Hotel, room three hundred three. I don't know if I have to mute real quick.
All right. Oh, GG. <laughs> yeah, I had to mute real quick. Um, but everything's good now. Ah, oh, welcome, sir. Quite the performance today, if I say so myself. Oh, um, thanks. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that. No, no, not at all, sir. Yeah, I, I just had to mute because someone was coming in and um, I didn't want to, like, make them feel uncomfortable that, like, uh, having them know that uh, they could be heard from the stream, so that's why I muted. Our efforts today can only help the Gatewaters rep, as they say. Huh? Rep? Yes, our reputation will swell as a hotel where, where the murderer used a wiretap. We could charge a premium for the room, of course. It'll be a great for business, sir. Whoa, whoa, Miss Maya hasn't been charged with murder. I, too, will become famous. The bellboy who brought the murder iced coffee. Why do I feel like we're both stuck in the same bad dream? So, you're our honored guest. Please, let me know if there's anything I could bring you. Okay, let's talk to you. Well, Miss Maya. Oh, Miss May. Oh, her. Sir, not to boast, but I know the moment I saw her. She would do it, I said. What the? Do what? I'm starting to think that the most suspicious person here is this guy. I wanted to ask you about the man who was with Miss May. May. Ah, yes. He struck me as a real lady killer, if you'd pardon the expression. I knew it from the moment I saw him, sir. He and I are from the same ilk. We both carry the scent of danger. There we are, in total agreement. Mr. Psycho Bellboy, there we are in total agreement. Oh my gosh. If you have a photo of that man, I'm quite sure I could identify him. A photo? Hmm. Could you tell me more about this hotel? Absolutely. And on the subject, I have an excellent idea, sir. Currently, this hotel is known as the Gatewater. I propose that we add a subtitle? A subtitle? The Gatewater Hotel, Murderer Manor. Well, what do you think? Uh, sounds great. Whatever floats your tea, say. What? Oh, gotta meet again. September 7th, Grossberg, Grossberg Law Offices. Huh? Looks like Grossberg is out today. Again. Yeah. He's avoiding me for some reason. Oh, 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 oh my gosh! Wait, 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 I see a picture! Oh my gosh! A picture? What's this? Old photos? There are two lying here. Something's been written in the pencil of the backs. DL6 Incident Exhibit A, DL6 Incident Exhibit B. Let's take a look at these. I'm sure I've seen this person somewhere. Who? Perhaps I'll borrow this photo. I'm sure no one will miss one little photo. And I might be valuable clue. I'll take it for now. Photograph quietly added to the court record. Can I take this too? Photo lies on the desk. Maybe I should switch it with the one I took? Yeah, let's switch it. I think I'll swap them. Photograph added to the court record. That's our guy. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, I know what to do. I can present it to the bellboy. Let me do that. Let me talk to the bellboy. So if I show it to the girl, she's going to be in full denial. But let me present it to him. Take a look at this photo. That's him, detective. Um, I'm the lawyer. Oh, I know that. I just wanted to say detective once. You know how it's. No, no I don't. Without a doubt, that is the man who checked in with Miss April May. How would I write in a fit a A fit a vent? <laughs> Afi David, swearing that's him. And Afi David? This guy's way too excited about him. Yeah, sure. Write it. 
Well, sure, why not? Yes. I've always wanted to write an affidavit, sir. From henceforth, I will be known as the bellboy who swore the affidavit. Just hurry up and write it. Uh, bellboy affidavit added to the court record. Not even Miss May could play dumb to this. Ooh, let's go. Okay, I wonder about the other girl. I wonder if that's actually Miss May. What she used to look like. She probably got plastic surgery. Like, on her face and boobs. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go to... Visit Miss May. You again? Can't you take a hint and stay gone? Hey. The only reason I'm back here is because you won't talk to me. Oh, so it's my fault now. You just don't have any s You don't have spiky hair and you also have a spiky heart. Oh, you don't just have spiky hair. That does it. When this case is done, I'm shaving my head. <laughs> no, your hair is wonderful. Alright, let's see. Let's freeze it. Surely she's 100% natural. <laughs> Alright, let's see. We got this. Present this. Could you have a look at this? What's that? The Bowboy's off me, David. It tells us everything we saw, such as the man you checked out in with. It was most definitely this guy. <laughs> now I'm getting somewhere. Ease your fears. Push your heart. Um. You're as beautiful as you are. <laughs> Stare never, ever shave right. Oh, push? Okay, push. This is it. It's all or nothing. Time to do a little blow. No use playing dumb, if indeed if that's all an act. If you don't talk, I'm taking this info to the press. What? Even though he should have been witness uh, to murder, your little friend was missing. I'm sure the press would have a field day with this reputation. Oh! Final talk. You, you win, lawyer. Yes, man, that felt good. It's great to be alive. Why are you pumping your fists in the air? <laughs> Never let her have her way. I see. I was going to try to make her ease into it, but I guess you have to push her pretty hard. Oh, God. I got the sniffles. Ah, easy, yeah. Now tell me the man you were with. That man, he's my boss. Red, white, the president of the information gathering conglomerate, Blue Corp. Red, white, information gathering. Well, I suppose you could call it a detective agency. Hmm. So this is the man that was with you the night of the murder. I'm, I'm scared to talk. I don't want to end up like her. It's okay. I'll just ask Mr. White himself. Can you tell me where Blue Corp is located? Wait, I got head pads, but I didn't see the head pads. Nani. Let me, let me do the trigger for the head pads because it, it's not head patty. There we go. Head pads! Yeah! <laughs> Mr. Red White at last. Finally, a lead on this guy. If April May couldn't have done it, that leaves him. We don't scam here. Yeah! Time to take action. The bell boys Afi dot it bit discarded. Okay, so I'm guessing when we see him, we're gonna have to get, take the other image. Um, let's move. Before we go to Blue Corp, let's go to the law offices and grab the other picture. Alright, this is getting ridiculous. Where the heck is that loafer? Ahem! <clears throat> ah, oh, that old familiar clearing of the throat. Aha! You again! Oh, hello, Mr. Gr Grossberg. Well, well, you are quite the thing, my boy. Excuse me? The trial, the trial. He was there? 
reminded me of myself when I was in my youth. Guess something got passed down through Mia, maybe? It brings me back memories, it does. Ah, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon you see. I apologize. It, it was a bit too much for me, my boy. Seeing you today, I will. I, I appreciate the reminiscing, but I'd much rather you gave me some information. So you came to see the trial. Yes, yes I did. Something about me bothering me all last night, you see. I couldn't get a wink of sleep. Really? What was that? Well, you see, it was just me a sister, that poor girl. My boy, I owe you my thanks, truly. I don't know what I would have done if things have gone poorly for the girl. If you were that worried about it, why didn't you offer to defend her? I asked you before, but why did you refuse to... A request for defense. I think I have the right to know. Ah, oh, right. Mr. Wright? No, no, no. I'm sorry. It's just... I need more time to think about it, my boy. He does seem troubled about something. Maybe I can find something that will inspire him to talk. The other day, I'm sure there was a big pretent pretentious-looking painting on that wall. Pretentious-looking? Well, you know, the one I mean... Anyway, where'd it go? Ah, uh, yes, well, I got rid of it. I got quite tired of the thing, really. I, uh, sold it, you see. Yes, that's right. Sold it? Not sure I'd buy that. Wasn't that painting rather important to you, sir? Did something happen? I don't see what's any of your business. Please, speak no more of that cursed painting. I didn't... I... Uh, present this to him. How is he gonna respond to this? Excuse me, I was wondering about this photograph. Where did you get that? Give it back at once. I'm sorry, but I, uh, to have taken it without your knowledge, but I have to know, who is this man? He was most likely in April May's room on the night of the murder. What's that you say? Are you quite sure, my boy? What has him so flustered, I wonder? I beg your pardon, but I must ask you to leave. I need to be alone. He's fallen silent as a stone. A rather large stone. I guess I should return that photo. Photograph returned to Mr. Grosper. Oh. Hmm. Cared about it. Well. It's fine because we got all the information we need. We don't need that photo. Surreal decor. Oh, that's the photo that was in Grossberg's place. Welcome. Please furnish me with the title of your personage. What the? Your name. What's your name? I was just inquirably asking the title that you go by. Uh, right. Phoenix Wright. Inquirably. Mr. Wright, was it? All right, I see. Super. Plunder ferocious. I can't read that. Surely something is up. Yeah, I think he bought out Grossberg. Perhaps I have intimidated you with my giantesque vocabulary. More like non existent vocabulary. That doesn't, those words don't exist. What is this guy's problem? I'm Red White, CEO of Blue Corp. You know, corporate expansion official. My business dealings bring me to the contact with the elite of the elite. So I'm afraid I'm not used to conversing with the worldly challenge. What a fruitcake! Hmm, let me guess. You're an attorney fresh out of law school, are you not? That is the only explanation for why you come to me meet me like this. He's too smart for us. No, he's dumb! <laughs> he's saying words that don't exist. What does he mean by that? No matter. So, what business does a mighty lawyer like have with a man such as myself? That's why <laughs> he's already ahead of us. Oh my gosh, he's the inventor of new words. Yipes, this guy's arrogance meter is off the scale. Miss May is an employee of Blue Corp, is she not? Correct. She's my secretariat. 
was shocked as to hear what she has done. She has not done anything. She is not the killer. What she has done? You mean the wiretap? Indeed. She is paid to answer phones. Tapping them is not in her job description. She does gather information for us as part of her duties. But I assure you, we do not condone illegal methods. It is ineffable that she had done this to us. And it sounds like something to turn Miss May into a scapegoat. Oh, so that's why Miss May was afraid to... Ah, cause she's the scapegoat. On the night of the murder, you were on Miss April May's hotel room? Who could say? I seldom pay attention to mundane details such as time and place. My motto is, don't worry, be happy. Still, Mr. White, the hotel bellboy has stated on the record that he does remember you very clearly. No matter, the bellboy can see what he pleases. I still won't talk to you. If you want me to speak, put me on the witness stand. Although I doubt you'll be able to capable of doing that. Hmm, he raises a good question, actually. Why didn't the prosecution call him as a witness? Should have seen the same as April May. Oh ho ho! The police, the courts. To me, they are mere toys. Play things for my amusement. What kind of company is Blue Corp anyway? Ah, excellent question. We buy and sell various kinds of information. We are a company of the future, you might say. We are the future. Sell information. In just 10 years, I built a business into the grand office you see now. Ah, in case you were wondering, Blue Corp was named after the color blue. I read it. Red, white. You have two colors in your name, and they don't have the word blue. Very suspicious. You could have had a thing called White Corp or Red Corp, but you call it Blue Corp. Founder of the CEO named it so. His name is Red, yeah. And why you ask? Because I like the color blue, of course. Fantabulistic. Fa Fantabulistic. Is it not? He's 99% sus. I know, right? Uh, there's something I've, that's been bothering me. Yes. Wait, well, that might be. That big painting on the wall over there. I've seen it before. You know, I've actually seen that painting before. Oh? Just yesterday, actually. Your point being? My point is simple. Or rather, my question is simple. Why is that painting hanging on your wall? Mr. Wrong was- <laughs> Because her name is right. He's calling us wrong? Hmm. He loves his colors. He sure does. Right. It appears you do not fully grasp your position here. I ask again, who are you? Um, huh? A lawyer? No, my feeble friend, a mere lawyer. Worth a nothing, zilch, zippo, nada. It's just like a sorry excuse for an attorney, grotty burger. W what? Ugh. What the? Am I getting punched? Uh, huh? He, he punched me. What the? Why is he punching me? Well, Mr. Lawyer, what will you do, eh? Charge me with assault. Charge away, I welcome it. For it is you who will be found guilty. What? Heed my ex exposition. The police, the courts, they will do my bidding. So you say, what I wonder, is that kind of control really possible? He looks like from cult. He's like someone with like a lot of power. Oh, I just realized it says Blue Corp here. With like the thinker. No wait, that's not the thinker. The thinker, he kind of like sits down. This is another statue. I don't expect you to understand. It is a word, a world beyond your com compensation. I would think it would be comprehension, not compensation. You came here from Grotty Burgers, I presume? Mr. Gross, Mr. Grossbergs, yes. Then you must ask him. Why is it that this painting of his hangs here? Perhaps he will tell you. Perhaps he will explain how a man can live purely for personal profit. Go now. Let's get out of it. There's nothing more to discuss. Uh, take a look around your place. 
this painting was until yesterday hanging in Mr. Grosberg's office. Why does White have it now? It's so hard to imagine a few possibilities. An impressive lineup of trophy. Judge's special runner-up, best participation. Judge's cooperation reward, special good try prize. The words judges and special kind of stand out. Probably strong-armed them to getting them. He did not earn these trophies. Cool. Judge's special runner-up. Best participation. Judge's cooperation award. Special good try prize. I'm guessing this is supposed to be his desk? My my, this is quite the thing. Uh, this is the top floor of a 20-story building. The view is quite residential. The statue of a man holding up the world. The blue corpse sign is certainly stands out enough. The model for the man is, of course, Mr. Wright. I don't think there's anything else here. Got some flirting words. <laughs> Go for it. I bet he was after the content inside the thinker since he works with information. Yeah, he wanted to know what was in there. Let's see. Let's move. Um, hmm. What did I want to look at? I think there's attention. No, not detention. Let's try the law office. No, let's move. Uh, Grossberg. Let's see. Huh? I don't think he's noticed me standing here. Maybe I should clear my throat? Ahem. <laughs> Jumping goosefats! Oh, you. What's wrong? He looks so pensive, like an old man at the end of his days. Hmm? I'm not senile yet. I was just thinking about this whole mess. Something's really bothering him. That much is clear. So you came to see the trial? Yes, yes I did. Something about bothering me last night, you see? I couldn't get a wink of sleep. Really? What was that? Well, you see, it was just me and sister. That poor girl. My boy, I owe you. My thanks, truly. I don't know what I have done if things have gone poorly for the girl. I asked before, but why did you refuse her request for defense? We're, we're flirt words. I'm weightlifter, so can you be my... What the... <laughs> that, that would make me crunch so hard. I'll be like... <laughs> I think I have a right to know. Oh, right, Mr. Wright. No, no, I'm sorry. It's just, I need more time to think about it, my boy. It does seem trouble, but add something. I'm starting to have a feeling I know what it is. So, I paid Blue Corp a visit. Oh, oh, oh? oh I see. Mr. Grosberg, I have to admit, something has been bothering me. Oh, what is it? Well, out oh, with it, my boy. You see, it's just... big painting. Mr. Grosberg, sir, there was a giant painting hanging right there the other day. Was there not? Oh wait, I already said this. It was in the CEO's office at Blue Corp Red's Red White's office. So, you noticed. I suppose I should have guessed you would. It is a large painting. Mr. Grosberg, I know you and Mr. White are connected somehow. C connected you say? Yes, and I think I know what it is. He's giving you information. He's blackmailing you. Mr. White has something on you, doesn't he? Blackmail? I think that painting is fairly gaudy proof. Very well. This may be the chance I've been waiting for. Maybe it's time for me to get this off my chest so I could finally rest easy again. Certainly, the ear lovers. I would love to have pressed that. But I feel like I would have been penalized for that. I don't know. Yeah. After all, you were M Mia's understudy. Perhaps it was fate? What's he talking about? 
Red White is a man who makes his living through intimidation. Blue Corp is a company that excels in finding people's weaknesses, I'm afraid. I've been paying them for 15 years now. Oh no! 15 years? Oh, because of that DL6 incident, as you may have guessed. The name of the back of those photographs. As you suspected, I could not stand to defend Zamaya because of this. White would have destroyed me if I did. So that's the connection. It's hard for me to tell you this, my boy. But being arrested by white, Red White would be nigh on impossible. Impossible? Give the other photo, old man. Yeah! He has information on everyone. It gives him an iron grip. He owns judges, attorneys, prosecutors, police, and politicians. What? They are bound, unable to do harm to themselves and therefore to him. Don't look at me like that. What you see is nothing more than the weight of many years. What is the DL6 incident? DL6 is nothing more than a sorting code for the police gave the case. It was 15 years ago now. I received a request from the medium, a spirit medium. Mia? Her name was Misty Faye. Faye? Indeed. It was Mia's mother. She has been investigating the murder of the beh bequest of the police. And she failed. As a result, the police called her a fraud. This is what Maya was talking about the other day. I did all I could for her, and in the end, I cleared her wrongdoing. That murder case, however, remains unsolved to this day. That case is the DL6 incident. But why were you blackmailed over this, Mr. Grosper? The DL6 incident was top secret at the time. It made sense. The police didn't want people to know that they were using a medium. They couldn't let people know. But one person found out. I... I told him. He told White? He offered me riches. It was an embarrassment to me now. Because I talked, the police were mocked far and wide. In secret, they began looking for the one who sold them out. Of course, White heard about it and came to me. Only this time, the offer was blackmail. You see... White controls the law of the country as he sees fit. Yet, if you s still challenge him, have a close look at Mia's office. Mia's office? She followed his very every move of years. She may have recorded something for what she has <gasps> I noticed that some of her files are missing! Alright, I know what you're talking about. Let's go. It's funny, looking at this room, it seems so normal. Hard to imagine a murder take took place here. Mr. Grossberg said there would be clues. Maybe I should have it another look. All the cases Chief has ever worked on are filed here. They're in alphabetical order. Let's take a look. Which file should I look at? Let's take a look at the A record of this file that catches my eye. A, B, F, Mr. Fay. Missy Fay. That's Mia Maya's mother. Hmm, should I take a look? Yes, of course. I've tarnished the Fay name, leaving only these words, my mother vanished. If I was here, I would hit stuff in my memories. <laughs> I was determined to find the ones who had made my mother blame herself in this way. Using the power that runs in my family, I held an audience of dead. Finally, the names of two men surfaced. One was Marvin Grossberg, a lawyer who sold my mother's information for riches. The other man who sold that information to the press. This parasite, who makes his fortune on threats and coercion. His name is... The record stops there. So Mia knew Grossberg. Hmm. Let's see, J through S? Nothing much here. Maybe I just skim through some of this. Uh, well, no harm in flipping through a bit, I guess. The biggest part's here, at the end of S. Suicide? Ew! She has a collection of suicide reports. There's politicians, policemen... There's a writing on most th these in pencil. Wait, this is Mia's handwriting? Wait, get it. Mia thought he was involved in these suicides. White drew them all too. And you sees his new piece paper clippings. Hmm, let's find the most disturbing one. Newspaper clipping added to the court record. Oh, we got all the information there. Okay. Um. 
Yeah. Oh, wait, let me have a cracker real quick. Yeah. Need. I'm gonna mute so that you don't hear like the the rapping sounds. You want the ASMR? Here you go. There you go. <laughs> Alright, let's see. We got... Yeah, let me go talk to Grossberg again. Let me present it. He'll be pretty happy to see this. I found this in Maya's files. So, this was investigating Red White as expected. Well, if you wanted to challenge him, you could present this in court. Not a bad idea. Do something else? What else can I do? Detention center. Is there anything else? Apparently, Miss May is in questioning. I doubt they'll let me talk to her today. Uh, so she's not here anymore. Okay, got it. Now let's go to Blue Court. Well, aren't you persistent? Sorry, but there's something I have to ask you. Mr. Lloyd, I really hate having to repeat myself. But it seems the message has not yet penetrated your thick skull. Stop bothering. If you try my patience further, I fear a nasty accident may occur. Do I make myself clear? Transparent. Ooh, we got more information. I think we're past needing to talk about April May. I gotta put this guy on the spot and quick. Hmm? What's the matter? You seem distressed. This guy's a pull, pull, pulling the wool over people's eyes. I gotta put him on the spot and quick. Stop that! Your hot gaze is giving me goosebumps. Alright. I know what I need to do. This is the only clue that Mia left me. I'd better make this one count. Mr. White, see this? It's an article describing the suicide of a politician. He was embezzling secret government funds. Then one day, word got leaked to the press. The very next day, he took his own life. And this concerns me how? I found this article in Mia's office. Miss Mia? She had the file of, um filled with articles like this. Every one of them was labeled with a single word, white. Mr. White, I know that you did this to a politician. Blackmailed them. You were blackmailing him. Blackmail? Not just him either. You were threatening and coercing hundreds of others. You were involved in all the suicide cases that Mia investigated. This company is built on blackmail. Am I right, or am I? That's why he's so rich. A bizarre accusation. Mr. Roll. What is it you want to be doing now? Investigating me? No, no, no. I think not. You should be uh, searching for the one who killed Miss Mia. Secretary of your office, hello? Mr. Wrong will be leaving now. Yes, sir. I'll send someone right away. Wait a second, Mr. White. You're absolutely right. I should be looking for the killer right now. And actually, I've done better. I found him. He's sitting right in front of me. <laughs> Just what are you insinuating? Me was on to you. She was keeping tabs. For this reason, you had April May tapping on her phone. Then Mia was murdered, and all the documents about you mysteriously disappeared. So, the culprit would be... 
Even a child could work it out, Mr. White. You did it. Secretary office. You won't be needing an, um, an escort for, for Mr. Wrong. Instead, please connect me to the public prosecutor's office. Oh, of course, sir. One moment, please. White, that you? What are you doing calling me at this time of, like this? Hello, Chief Prosecutor. I've changed my mind. I want to testify tomorrow. What's this about? The Mia Faye case. I witnessed the, mur the murder, you see. And thus, as a very important witness, I would like to testify. What? Why now? I thought you said you didn't want to go to court. Quietude. I told you I changed my mind, didn't I? Oh, and one more thing. Send the police over here right away. The man is standing in front of me. He looks quite dazed, but he could be violent. What? What man? Are you even listening? The executioner, the hatchet man, the liquidator, the killer man. What? Mr. White, this isn't one of those. Chief prosecutor, I don't believe you were in the position to freely offer your opinions to me, correct? I'm telling you to send the police now. Now you're framing me? Did I tell you, Mr. Wrong? You're a mere lawyer. As was Miss Mia. How dare you! I'll point the finger at you, and you'll be tried as Miss Mia's killer. The case is as good as settled. No lawyer of any worth would defend you. I have friends in local lawyer association, you see. You'll be given a lawyer so stupendously inept that they will even make you look competent. I... I feel faint. Detective Kumju reporting, sir. Uh... Butts! Harry Butts! Right, actually, Phoenix right. My friend's name is Larry. Oh, right, sorry, pal. Butts was the murderer, right? He was not the murderer! He was tried for murder, but he's not guilty. Detective Gumshoe, I present to you the man who killed Miss Mia Fey. What? Take this despicable human and being into custody. Farewell, Mr. Wrong. Oh, I oughta. December 8th, 3.37 p.m. That was in the span of four minutes. No, wait, this is the next day. Detention center visitor's room. No, I'm in prison? Can't believe it's only been a day since the first trial. My trial begins tomorrow. White's going to set a trap for me. And the prosecution will be in and on, of course. Edgeworth included. An attorney will be assigned to me by the state yesterday. I refused. I had an idea. Right. Mr. Wright! Oh, Maya. Reed, they let you out of detention. Just now, yes. It's all thanks to you. Huh. Now I'm afraid we've switched places. What? You mean you? I explained what happened to Maya. Now we're defending ourselves. Yeah. This reminds me that there's a YouTube channel that did Phoenix Wright musical. Ooh. That's cool. How many people does that man need to destroy before he's satisfied? My mother. My sister. Now you. Yeah. This has gone too far. Mr. Wright, please tell me. Is there anything I can do? Oh, well. Defend me in court. Alright. You could be my defense lawyer tomorrow. Alright. Huh? Leave it to me. I am Mia's sister, after all. Lawyership runs in our blood. Wasn't it ghost powers that ran in your blood? I'd better run to the bookstore and pick up a copy of Law for Rookies. Wait, 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 wait. What, 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 what? <laughs> kidding. It was a joke. No way. No, really. I was kidding, but thanks. It was good to know that you were on my side. There really isn't anything you could do for me anyway. This channel was called Random Encounters. Oh! But. But I can't just sit here and do nothing. I've got to give that man a piece of my mind. Just a piece? Okay. Then, come to the trial tomorrow. Okay, I'll be there. I'll show them a thing or two. Times may have changed, yet, with the crime it's the same old story. 
In fact, it's gotten worse. Lengthy court proceedings are no longer realistic. Beginnings a few years ago, a limit three days were put into initial court trials. My red in the ring! Bite! <laughs> oh man, you can't even see me doing the fists. Rolled up fist going, yeah, let's fight. <laughs> It's like, it's game over, son. I got, uh, wait, where's, do I have the, hmm, I don't have the gun. Darn, I don't have the gun. I thought I did. Whoops. <laughs> Almost all finished in a day, most with a guilty verdict. I never thought I would end up in the defendant's chair myself for this case. True culprit appearing as a star witness. This is it. Tomorrow, it's me or him. To be continued. Oh boy. I want to finish this case. For this stream. We're going to finish this case. September 9th. 9.52 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1 Well, I guess this is it. Yeah. One way or another, this case gets decided today. <gasps> Phoenix! Look! Oh, oh my gosh, you're so handsome. <laughs> prosecutor, Edgewood. I received a call from the Chief Prosecutor Office yesterday. I was told whatever Mr. White says Today, it will be absolute truth. No matter how much you try to attack his testimony. If I raise an objection, I have it in good faith that the judge will listen to me. But this way had the judge in his pocket too? So, you're saying I'm going to be guilty? End, end of story? Miles, so close. Whoa. I would do anything to get my verdict, Mr. Wright. Anything. Why? How can you torment an innocent person like this? Innocent? How can we know that? The guilty will always lie to avoid being found out. There's no way to tell who is guilty and who is innocent. Same goes to the person you're trying to defend. All I could hope to do is def get is every defendant declared guilty. So, I make it that my policy, Edgeworth, you've changed. Huh? Phoenix, you know him? Don't expect any special treatment from Phoenix, right? <laughs> Phoenix? Well, court will be starting soon. What? Oh, wait! We get a past, I see. Yeah, there's more to just like saying objection. We actually have a past. Your defense attorney isn't even here yet. They're not. And I'll be defending myself. What? I love that face. <laughs> okay, let's do this. September 9th, 10 o'clock a.m. District Court, courtroom number one. Oh, my is next to me. Court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, are you sure you're up to this? Yes, Your Honor. I'll be defending myself. Understood. Very well. Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. As the details of the event are already quite clear to the court, today we'll be hearing the testimony of the witness of the defendant's crime. I see. The prosecution may call its witness. Maya, the emotional support, and for the finishing blow to Red's face. Easy. Yeah! That's what you get for accusing Maya and me. It went far too smoothly. Why didn't the judge ask Edward why his witness didn't testify before? It's like, it's like he already knows why. Hmm. If anyone's going to raise an objection about this, I suppose it's me. Mr. Edgeworth? You owe an explanation to the court. Why didn't this witness testify the trial against Miss Maya Fay? Hmm. I'm ever so sorry. Mr. White is a busy man, and besides, 
At the time, I thought he was Miss May's opinion was all that was needed. Again, my sincerest apologies to the court. Excellent, Mr. Edgeworth. I appreciate your demeanor. Ray, he gets to show off and I get nowhere. I would like to call Mr. Red White to the stand. Please, state your full name. You wish to know the title of my personage? Oh god. Uh, your name? Yes, that's what I said. Oh dear, do my locutions confuse? Name? These two are great together. Feels good, man. Yeah. My name is Red White, but my friends call me Blanco Nino. I am CEO, or I use a more common term, the president of Blue Corps. Did you know the victim Miss me? Oh my gosh, my eyes are getting blinded right now from the, the light. I have a little spotlight thing. I need more light. More light of the room. I kind of lost all my light. I'll go, go pick up that thing real quick. Alright, I got my more light. Now my eyes are not burning. <laughs> My eyes! Yeah, it was- oh, the room was getting dark, even though it's only 1 p.m. Welcome back, yeah. Did you know the victim missed me a fit? That would be... Nagatori. No, I did not. You were at Gatewater Hotel the night of the murder? Correct. And you witnessed the murder from there? Ahem. Why tell what you already know? Very well, Mr. White. Mr. White, you may begin your testimony. I can't rip this guy's testimony apart. Be done for. Why do I always feel like the end of the world and I'm on the last man standing? Ho ho ho. Ugh. I hope you have made your peace with God, Mr. Lawyer. Let him have it, Phoenix. Let's see, it was about 9 o'clock, I believe. I was quietly pursuifying, uh, that's reading to you, some papers by the window. Then I heard a bedlam coming from outside. Pursuifying, that sounds like you're just like taking photosynthesis. <laughs> Surprised, I turned to look at the building across the way. It was when I saw him, a spiky haired red man. Spiky haired man attacking a woman with long hair. But that completely contradicts the statement that May said. Right? She said it was the girl, and now he says it's me. <laughs> Needless to say, that man was none other than you, Mr. Lawyer. I called Miss May over at once. She too was flabbergasted, of course. And the victim, she she ran away. But you can't chase. Finally, there was a terrible impact, and then it was all over. It was Jover. Hmm. Things occurred as you testified, then I'm afraid the defendant is guilty. Very well defended, er, uh, I mean, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. May was proven a liar, so he has some li Oh, you're right. Let me see if I can take another clicker real quick. I didn't know what time it was. Because I'm an absolute, absolute, positively perfect, you know? No, no, no. You're not going away with that. You are so mistrusting, Mr. Lawyer. So, what was the proper term of her secretary again? Anyway, Miss May ordered room service at 9 o'clock. Happened soon after the room service arrived. Well, that's what Miss May said, too. The bellboy bring, did bring the coffee and saw Miss May. 
But he testified he did not see you at the time. Ahem. This is your concern. Silly lawyer. Miss May received the coffee outside the room. Of course you could not see me. You would need an x-ray vision to pull off something like that. Hmm. Tell us, what were you doing at the time? It was quite quietly parasifying. By window, you mean the one directly across Maine from Faye and Co. Law offices. Correct! That is the only window you see. And you were there reading papers? Correct. The Gatewater is a businessman who's hell, and I was busy man who had business to do. Yes, business reading papers, I see. A bed lamp. It must have been when you attacked, I presume. We see. Continue. What? Surprise, I turned to look at the building across the way. It's a pleasure to listen to you. Thank you. I I'm so glad you came by to visit. So, you were reading your papers until you heard that sound. But of course, I am no snoop. Peeping out of the windows at night. No snoop. You're right. You made a career out of snooping. It was then I saw him. A spiky-haired man attacking the woman with long hair. Spiky-haired? Needless to say, that man was none other than you, Mr. Lawyer. You just say directly conflicts with Miss May's testimony. Miss May clearly stated the assailant looked like a girl. I've always been proud of my eyesight, Mr. Lawyer. Just what is your eyesight? Is it gonna say like 10, 20 or something? Counting both eyes, 40. He's stupid! <laughs> 40. Don't have them together. I think the witness is trying to say that his eyesight is good. Hey, whose side is this judge on anyway? And what did you learn that to do then? Superman! I called Miss May over at once. She too was surprised, of course. What was Miss May doing at that time? She had just finished watching her soap opera on TV and was weeping openly. Did you know she had a tapping on the Fate Office film? Irrelevant. That has nothing to do with the case at hand. I care not. I will answer the lawyer's bold inquiry. Miss May has been acting alone when she tapped onto the phone on the Fay woman. You make a good politician, Mr. White. Ho ho, I know, after all, I'm El Presidente. Please, continue. The victim, she, she ran away, but you gave chase. Be a little bit more detailed about that. I think it's worth knowing exactly what happened. Of course, compra day. I understand. The victim was attacked by you and ran to the left. Oh, I got, I got something. I got something on this. There was something here. The victim dodged an attack, then ran to the right. And she was caught and struck. We got him. We got him. Are you sure? As you know, I'm absolutely perfect. Perhaps you could change your testimony to reflect this new detail? Mm-hmm, I got you. It said to the right, but you said the left. Wait a minute. I'm gonna get, try it anyway. I don't know if it's like you see in the opposite. Oh! <gasps> Wait. From May's perspective, it looked like the right. But if he was the killer, it would look like the left. Oh! <gasps> Wait right there. Mr. White, you've dug your own grave. What is this? You said the victim ran to the left. But that directly contradicts Miss May's testimony. She clearly stated the victim ran right. Oh, ho, 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 it's simple. You must have misheard her. I think not. Look at the floor plans. The killer was here. And the victim was here. And the victim ran to the left as you claim she did. She would have been running directly away from the door. 
she would have been running into a dead end. Don't you find that odd? Oh, Very strange. I did not see her run to the left. I, I did see her run to the left, I did. Phoenix, look at his face. I don't think he's lying about this one. True. Maybe he really did see the victim run left. So he did witness the killing? Wait a second. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Miss May says right, and Mr. White says left. Can you explain this contradiction to the court? Both are right. Both witnesses are telling the truth, for once. I'll be off! I'm glad to sit on your stream. I got sick, and while I'm home, I want to try streaming too. <gasps> yeah! That'd be awesome! Yeah! I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, have a nice one. I doubt it. But rather, that does not clear up the contradiction. There is one scenario that will explain their conflicting accounts. What? Obviously, the witness was not viewing the crime from the hotel. Bye-bye! Mr. Wright, does that mean... Yes, what do you mean he was not viewing the crime from the hotel? He was not in the hotel. Where could he have been? In the law offices of Fanco, of course. More specifically, he was standing here. Time to show the court where Mr. White was standing. This is where he was. Look, when the victim ran to the door, if he was watching from that point, it would appear that she... that she ran to the left. Please, this is no time for jokes and ill takes. This is where the killer was standing. Easy! Order. I will have order. And when disturbing the order of the courtroom will be held in contempt. Mr. Wright, what are you suggesting? Rafskillian! Postulations of the defense are a distortion of the truth, Your Honor. Indeed, they do seem to be far-fetched. Oh, oh, oh. You provide us even so much entertainment, Mr. Lawyer. What now? He's laughing? The hilarity of the moment that gave me something to remember. It appears that I have been unclear, and for this, I apologize. Mr. Your Honor, might I be allowed to testify once more? Very well, let's hear your revised testimony. Good luck. Can't fix a broken testimony, buddy. She ran to the left. Miss May's testimony was correct, as was mine. When you assaulted the girl, she first ran to the left. And then when you hit her, savagely... That's what I saw. Next, with the last of her strength, she ran to the right. You chased her and delivered the final blow. Nope, I got proof of that. That is what Miss May saw. You see? You hit her twice. Don't you remember, Mr. Lawyer? No, cause she dodged. Hmm, that does seem to make sense. Will you be cross-examining the witness's testimony? You bet I will. I mean, yes, Your Honor. Oh, I don't even need to press him. Easy, easy. Game and match. And then you hit her savagely, that's what I saw. Uh, with the last string, she ran to the right. You chased her and gave her the final blow. You hit her twice, there we go. Um, I need to find something that says I hit her, like, once. Is there something I have that... So I'm just gonna do this. If it's not that, then it's the other one. Fight me, Red, yeah! Oh, it's not right. Your Honor, this statement contradicts this evidence. I don't see anything contradictory. Uh. No. 
Oops, that didn't go well. Okay, let me press him and then I'll see something. So, you were watching both times. I suppose I was. And please excuse me for not testifying this soon. What do you think, Phoenix? I think we got him right where we want him. He slipped. Let him laugh for now. I'll soon wipe that smile off his face. Oh, I gotta go back from the beginning? Okay. <laughs> Where was it say that it took one strike? Let me see this. Okay, let's try that. Okay, what is this? Mr. White. The victim died from a single blow. What do you have to say about that? Oop. Now's my chance to hit him where it counts. Mr. White, it wasn't you who told this court that you were absolutely positively perfect. Will refrain from using that phrase from now on. Your Honor, could I ask this witness for a new test of baloney? The witness is obviously confused, Your Honor. I would like to request a ten minute break. Yes, quite. The witness is confused because he is lying. I am empath emphatically request that there is no break, Your Honor. Yeah, we want justice! Don't let him get away! Very well. If the witness would like to care to revise his testimony. Crowd's on my side. No slipping out of this now, White. Mr. White? Oh, okay? Um, well, you see. I looked at the other window when I heard that thing fall. When the next moment I saw Miss Mia run to the left, the killer you attacked her, but she dodged. But um, then she turned and ran to the door, and then you did her in with a single blow. Whap! Okay, that's. But you said you looked at through the window and she ran to the left, and we both we said that both May and you were correct about the directions. So why you insisted it was left from the window? Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Mr. Your Honor. My stomach, you see, it's hurting. Deal with it. It's almost over. <laughs> wow, the burn. You see, I looked at the other window when I heard that thing fall. What are you talking about what thing fall? You heard that thing fall. What exactly was that thing? Oh, uh, uh, oh, that, um, the glass light nightstand. Right, the one that fallen over at the scene. Phoenix, doesn't that s something strike you odd? Yeah. We haven't used that evidence about the, the shards of glass. Yeah, that is odd. But press further, Mr. White. Huh? W what? Saying you saw the glass nightstand. Oh, <gasps> there's no way you could see it. Y yes. Then change. Then change your testimony to reflect that. S sorry, my bad. The witness will revise his testimony. Okay, of course. A light stand was standing in the door when I looked. A. But if you look at this. The nightstand is right over here. Oh, you can't even see my mouse. Uh, it's on the left side. Away from the... Here, from the uh, the light hitting from the window. So there is absolutely no way for him to be able to see that light stand even existing or even falling over. So, we got you there. Objection! Mr. White. 
It is impossible for you to see have seen that light stand. What? Look at this. This is a full pants of the scene of the murder, yes? Correct, Your Honor. Now, look. If you were to look through the window of the office, this is the area you would be able to see. Here. Well, note that the stand is not within the visible area. Well, Mr. White, what do you have to say about that? Disu... Let's see. Mr. White, if you were in the Great Water Hotel as you claimed, you could have not seen the stand before it fell over. In fact, you wouldn't have been able to see it after it fell either. There was no way you could have recognized the broken shards as glass nightstand. So, when did you see the stand, Mr. White? It must have been the moment it fell. The only place you could have seen it is from the inside the Fay Law offices. In other words, you were at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. Gah! Oh, his transformation. Mr. White? Mr. White. You did it, didn't you? Mr. Your Honor. I, I, Miss Mia. Eh, looks like we're about to get our verdict. Objection! That's far enough, Mr. Phoenix Wright. W what? I forgot about Edgeworth. Mr. White. I think the time has come. Shouldn't you confess your crime now, hmm? What? I said you should confess your- Oh, Edgeworth is ganging up on this dude! Oh my gosh! He thought he was on his side. Ergo, confess that you placed a wiretap. What? The wiretap? Order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, explain to the court what you mean by this. Distinguished members of the court. Mr. White is slightly confused. Allow me to explain. I really don't like the way this is headed. He's misleading the crowd. Oh, I thought he was on our side. As you know, Mr. White is the CEO of Blue Corp. The order to secretary, Miss April May, to tap the law offices of um, Miss Faye. What does that have to do with your honor? The question is, when was the wiretap placed in the office and by who? No, you wouldn't. Mr. In order to place the wiretap, you entered Miss Faye's office. Am I correct? Correct? You are most correct, Miles. Give me a break. Yes, in order to place the wiretap, I breached the Faye Co. Law offices. That is when I saw the accursed light stand. Oh. Now I'm confused. Please explain to the court what that all means, Mr. Edgeworth. Gladly, Your Honor. Mr. Phoenix Wright has made his position quite clear. He has determined that Mr. White knew about the glass stand was in the office. He has shown that there was only one time Mr. White could have seen the stand, at the very moment of the murder. Thus, Mr. White, would you have believed that Mr. Oh wait, Mr. Wright, would you have believed that Mr. White was the murderer? I see. However, it's the fact that Mr. White has been in the office well before the murder took place. When he went to the place of the wiretap, he could have seen the glass stand before then. Ergo, Mr. Phoenix Wright's theory is revealed for the basis conjecture it is. Man, we almost had him there. Mr. White, you will testify to the court about the wiretapping. Ahem, leave it to me. I, I feel faint. More, more lies! Miles really hanging by a thread there. Yeah, he really doing the stretches. It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. I have entered the Fane Co. Law Offices. Of course, I had done so in the place to wiretap. That is when I saw this glass white stand. Hmm. So, I saw the stand before the night of the incident. 
And this is how you were able to identify what had fallen over by the sound? Correct. That is right. I see. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine. What am I supposed to do now? Good luck, Phoenix. Well, we're gonna have to press everything. It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. D do you have proof? Miss April May knew the details of Miss Faye's phone conversation. This proves that the wiretap was placed before the murder. Huh? Right! Oh, snap. I had entered the Fane Cove offices. Was it really you that went into the office? Or Miss May? Unidentified fingerprints several days old were found in the Fate and Code Law offices. Those were obviously Mr. White's. If I know Mr. Edgeworth, he already run a check on those prints. Now, Mr. White, tell us why you went to the Fate and Code Law offices. Yes, I need to know. Of course, I had done so to place a wiretap. Why did you tap M um, Mia's phone? That has no bearing to the current case, Your Honor. Blue Corp is a detective agency of sorts. We have a responsibility to protect the client and confidentiality. That is when I saw this blue glass light stick. Why did you notice something so insensuous as a light stand? The light stand was made entirely out of glass. It was quite stylish, so I guess it was a lasting impression on me. Such beautilicious thing deserves attention, does it not? That is all. Hmm. Nothing there to press him on. Well, maybe he's rattled enough that I could bluff something out of him. Hmm. Hello, Shinji! It's been a while. How are you? Then to the place of wiretap. I've run out of ammo. I'm afraid this is as far as you go, Mr. Wright. The time has come for you to admit your defeat. You fought honorably. No more. I can't take this anymore. Mr. Wright, are you giving up? Y yes, you're- No way! Phoenix! Phoenix, over here! No, that was. Mia? Never give up, Phoenix. M Mia? That's good, you're doing well. W where- Where am I? Am I going through a speed spirit medium? The waiting lobby? What happened? No, right. I lost the trial. I was hallucinating. Uh, you're finally awake. G what the? What the heck? Uh, hey, Phoenix. Jack? There's no way to greet an old friend. Phoenix, I want you to take a look at me. What the? You're... Maya? Did you know the Fae women have a strong psychic powers? When you accept your defeat in court, it appears that it was strong enough to shock the weaken Maya's true powers. Hello, ma'am. <laughs> Go cross... Crossing the border. Oh my gosh. So Maya is channeling you, Mia? That's right. I am Maya, but I'm also Mia. Now, I want you to listen to me, Phoenix. Maya never gave up. You can't either. That's why I came here to tell you. But... We don't have much time, Phoenix. Now listen. You've already won. Huh? You have the receipt in the court record, right? Um, oh yeah. The one you wrote Maya on? Phoenix. Wright wrote that, not me. So, so what do I do with it? Look at the front of the receipt. The front? It's a regular receipt. Looks like it's from a famous department store. One thousand dollars. Whoa, big spender. Item? Glass snipe. Oh! <gasps> Need of purchase. September fourth. September fourth. That's right. Phoenix. I bought that light stamp the day before I was killed. Whoa. 
Oh my god. Thank you for the follow angel memory. Whoa. Now what did Mr. White say in the testimony? It's the beginning of September, the week before the murder. We got some news for you. Uh, present. How do I present again? Wait. Then it. Oh, I can't, um, present it yet. It was beginning in September, the week before the murder. He said he saw the stand the week before the murder. There you go. I think the court is about to re reconvene. Go do it, Phoenix. I know you're innocent, so now you just have to prove it. Right. Receipt updated in the court record. Whoa. September 9th, 1.16 p.m. District Court, courtroom number one. We'll make you proud, yes! Court will now reconvene for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. It's the defendant rather. Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Y yes, sorry, Your Honor. I'm fine now. Then let's start where you left off. Your Honor, there is nothing to go back to. The cross-examination of Mr. White is finished. All that is required now is for you to pass judgment on the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Hmm. Your Honor, please, give me one more chance. I promise you, this is the last time I ask you. Hmm. But, as Mr. Edgewood has noted, the trial is more than less finished. Mr. Edgewood, do you have an opinion on this matter? I say, let us... Give Mr. Phoenix Wright his last chance. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Let's go! You're finished. It was the beginning of September. Easy, easy. So naive, he better learn. <laughs> Look closely at this. See the word Maya written in blood? <laughs> You're grasping! I think not. Look at the other side of the receipt. The, the other side? Your Honor, could you tell the core what is written on the other side of the receipt? Hmm? Well, a glass light stand and the date of purchase. Why, that's the day before the murder. You see, Mr. White, when you allegedly entered the Fane Code Law offices at the beginning of September, the stand should have not been there. Well, there he goes. Well, Mr. Wright, White, can't get out of this one, can you? No. It's pos achievable. Uh oh, he's losing it. Well, Your Honor, I understand there must be quite a bit of pressure on you. But I think you agree you can't judge me guilty after these circumstances. Did no one check the inside? I think people didn't even, like, pay attention to the other side of the receipt. Very well. Then, that is all for the trial of... Objection! We still need to prove that he's the killer, right? Not so fast, Phoenix Wright. Eh? What? No way! No way he can worm this out of this one! Yeah, it was only brought up during the testimony because of that. Yeah. Oh, wait. Forgot it's Edgeworth. You need to give that to us. Yeah. There need to be a certain thread of logic to the defendant's claims. However, there is no concrete proof that Phoenix Wright is innocent. Ergo. I would like to request one more day before Phoenix Wright is granted his freedom. I need time to make one more inquiry on the matter. Hmm? Another inquiry? This isn't going to be another one of those updated autopsy reports. This guy just makes up evidence as he pleases. This is bad. We gotta object. Objection battle! Mr. White's guilt is obvious. There is no need to prolong this trial any further. Hmm. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? 
anyone is going to call Mr. White a tri trial, it's going to be me, the prosecution. I need a day to ascertain whether these new claims have any basis in factual evidence. Hmm. You see. Objection denied. Oh no, what? The completion of the trial of Mr. Phoenix Rights will be postponed until tomorrow. No, there's no telling what will happen if I don't end this now. Edwards is sure gonna come up with or just make up something. And after Mia showed up to help me at all. Mr. Your Honor, may I go home? Of course. Thank you for your time. G the witness will get away. Oh my gosh, she looks like Mia! <laughs> Mia? Phoenix, read this note out loud. Mia, what is this? List of names in Mia's handwriting. Your Honor, if I may. You're quite persistent today, Mr. Wright. You bet I am. My life is riding on this one. I mean, yeah, he's persecuted, so he needs to defend himself. I have something I would like to read to the court. We press, we strong! <laughs> the memo Mia had given me with list of names. Many of them sounded strangely familiar. People in finance, famous celebrities. That's when it happened. So stop, detest, halt. Please stop, make him stop. How, how did you get that list? Mr. White, admit your guilt right here and now, or else this whistle will be released to the press. I, I confess, I confess. I, I did it. I hit her, I hit Miss Mia with the thinker. Please close, Your Honor. Well, I see no reason to continue this trial, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You've done it again. That was quite a spirited cake defense. Yes, Your Honor. I guess you could say that. If only you knew how spirited it was. Hmm, well, this court finds defense? Ahem, <clears throat> rather, it's defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Time. Let's go! That is all. The court is adjourned. What's the thinker? So the thinker is the, um, the statue that was the clock. Yeah, confetti! September 9th, 2.24 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. Well, I never thought I would get to be saying this again. But congratulations, you're lucky I was born a fae. I'm lucky you've been both you and I on my side. I'm glad you made it. Thank you, Phoenix. You risked a lot to help me and Maya. Killed her with a statue? Yeah. I won't forget it as long as I live. As long as you live? My time here is running out. Oh? Huh? Maya's powers are still weak. Can't stay here that long. What? No! There's still so much to say. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll meet again. D chief! <laughs> I'm not the chief anymore. Phoenix, can you come to the office tonight, say 9 o'clock? The office? Oh, does he have stupid- No, no, no. It's not a big thinker statue. It's not the original. It's actually like a miniature statue that's like, um, doubles as a clock. Yeah, it's a miniature statue made by Larry. And it was like basically like decoration, but it's like heavy stone. The office. I'll see you later. Chief. Mia! September 9, 9.02 p.m. Van Co. Law Offices. Being here, it's hard to not think about that night. You came. Mia. I was kind of worried you might not. Huh? Of course I can. Well then, I'm pretty hungry. How about a burger? M Mia? <laughs> you should see your face! Mia! What are you talking about? It's me, Maya. Uh, Maya? What? Did I look like my sister? Look like you were her! Am I 
might be able to use that. Oh, Phoenix, go to the store and buy me lunch, would you? Um, Maya, why are you here? Because of this. See? Mia wrote me a letter. Take care of Phoenix for me. Take care of... huh? She means the office. This office. Someone has to help with the new writing co law offices, right? And who better but me? Maya Faye, reporting for duty. We know. On second thought, let's make this casual. Yo, Nick! Maya here, ready to get down to business. You don't mind calling you Nick, do you? It's a great nickname. Mia said that's what you call your friend... What your friend Larry calls you. Nick. We know what this means. We're partners! You know, when I think about it, this is Maya's fault that I'm here now. But if it wasn't for her, I'd probably be in jail. Right in co law offices. That has a good ring to it. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Aww. Good luck, Phoenix. I'll always be here watching. If it means I'll be able to see me again, sure, why not? Yeah. Right. Okay, Nick, let's do it. Huh? Do, do what? Burgers, dummy. Burgers. There's a great burger joint just down the street. Come on. Time's a wasting. Uh, okay, wait up. Aww. This is a good way to end. Wow. Brand new episode has been added. Yes, let's save my progress and we can end stream here. Wow. Thank you so much for coming. It was... We achieved so much on this. Yeah. GG. Yeah, this was so fast. I was able to solve. All right. Let me move to the screen. Yeah. All right. Let me find uh, someone to raid for today. Oh. <gasps> Iroh is streaming? I could write, read Iroh. I haven't read, uh, seen Iroh in a while. Yeah! I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for coming. Bye bye, guys. Oh, I was about to get, get ready for work. Oh, yo, I guess I ended at a good time. All right. See you. Yeah, have a good time.